Smart devices are becoming more prevalent in people's homes and offices. However, today, these devices do not sense what is occurring around them, therefore limiting the ways they can augment human activities. One promising option is to use microphones and smart devices to listen to environments, and then use machine learning to infer activities. This intelligence, in turn, can unlock new assistive applications for smart homes and offices. To train these classifiers, there have been two predominant approaches with different accuracy and user burden implications. First is to train the sensor manually after it is deployed, most often by demonstrating different activities and having the user provide class labels. Because the data is collected in situ on specific objects of interest, accuracy tends to be quite high. However, the burden to the user is also high. The other approach is to provide users with classifiers that are already trained and work out of the box. This is achieved by training a classifier on a large general corpus of acoustic data. However, because the classifier has no data for a user's particular objects of interest, nor any data collected in the user's environment, it tends to be less accurate. But importantly, the burden to the user is very low. In this research, we propose and evaluate a balanced approach that seeks to provide high classification accuracy while minimizing user burden. Our approach requires no upfront data, and instead, a smart device listens and learns about events over time, with no manual demonstration needed. Because it learns in situ, it is highly tuned to the environment and objects of interest, and thus can offer superior accuracy than general pre-trained classifiers. For example, here's a smart speaker sitting on a kitchen countertop. It starts with no data or knowledge about its environment. As sounds occur, the device clusters live audio data using deep learning embeddings, spectral information, and acoustic direction as features. Note that no raw audio is saved to the device or to the cloud, helping to preserve privacy. Eventually, the system becomes confident that a cluster of data is a unique sound, at which point it prompts the users for a label the next time a sound occurs. This one answer can then be used to label a cluster. What was that sound? That was a microwave. As time goes on, the system can continue to add data to clusters, training better and better classifiers. It can also continue to prompt the user for labels as new clusters emerge thus slowly building up a library of recognized sounds. There are different clustering behaviors that can be applied. For example, the system can be conservative, accepting only the most well-defined clusters. This has the benefit of high accuracy, but also means fewer sounds will be recognized. Alternatively, the system can be relaxed, accepting looser clusterings. This has the benefit of recognizing more events, but generally at the cost of lower accuracy. This system can also employ different conversational strategies to elicit labels from users. For example, instead of asking a fully open-ended question, the system can make an initial guess using a general pre-trained model. This approach can also be used for confirmatory purposes, verifying cluster labels. It can also be used for edge cases, helping to improve cluster boundaries. And finally, in cases where cluster boundaries are obscure, the system can ask refinement questions to aid in separation. These conversational strategies can be used to unlock new interactive experiences for the home. What was that sound? That was my door. You want me to notify you when that happens again? Yes. Besides smart speakers, wearable applications can also be enriched through cross-modal learning of both acoustic and motion information. Finally, our system can be used as a workflow optimization tool to automatically cluster audio events and propagate labels across long audio recordings.
Please see our paper for experimental results. Thanks for watching.